All right. So today we're going to talk uh, about the question, tell me about a situation in which you were responsible for project planning. And it's a really important question. Now, before we get to that, I want to give a few tips just from watching some of your uh, answers yesterday. So the first is I want you to try to add in a little bit of the drama, right? When you're, when you're actually interviewing someone, you've probably heard, try to make it a conversation and make it fun, but it's really the drama of the stories that's going to make it memorable for the person you're speaking with. So tell me what that climax was, right? Tell me, oh my God, it almost never happened. And the whole project was going to fall apart until I came in and saved the day. Or tell me, um, tell me how like you were nervous about it and you weren't hundred percent sure it would work. And then it did work, right? If you can give me a little bit of that drama, either in story or in tone of voice, maybe with pauses, with inflections, with things like that, it makes it a lot more approachable. And it really shows that you're proud of your work. I was watching some videos and you're really just delivering the story like as it happened, which is True, you want to deliver the story as it happened, but give me a little bit more pride, a little bit more drama, and I think it'll make your stories a lot more um, exciting and make the conversation flow a lot better. So something to think about when you're recording. Then the second thing I noticed was some people's stories aren't a perfect fit, right? A lot of people are pivoting from very different careers into this new one. So when someone asked you, you know, yesterday's question about working with, uh, or yesterday's question was about, um, uh, what do you think is going to be one of the hardest parts of the job for you. If you're sharing a story from something very non-engineering related, that's totally okay because that's most of your career and that's what you got, but bridge the gap for me, right? You could finish it off and say, so I know this isn't exactly what this coming role is going to look like, but these two skills that I learned are very applicable or, but I read on the job description that you're really looking for someone who do this. So I'm going to tell you a story where I learned to do this. Right, the more you can bridge the gap and say, here's specifically what I'm speaking about, the better it is. You know, I was watching some answer um, who was talking about her experience in real estate. And it was a really complex story and it was really great, but it was so different from what anything around engineering was that I didn't really understand the relationship. So bridging that gap could really help, uh, help the interviewer understand where you're coming from. So. Let's talk about today's question of the day. Tell me about a situation in which you're responsible for project planning. There's a few reasons you're probably being asked this question. They wanna understand how you work with timelines. Timelines are really important in software engineering, obviously. Uh, project planning is a big part of that and making sure you're delivering on time is very important. So they wanna understand how you think about and work with timelines. They wanna understand your cross-functional skills. Right, Project planning is not just about how am I going to accomplish something on my own. It's about how am I going to work with other people and other teams and make sure we can all together accomplish whatever it is we're working on. And that has to do, the last thing is leadership skills. When someone asks about something like project planning, again, it is how are you going to approach it, but it's also how are you going to incentivize and encourage and invite your teammates to approach this same challenge. So when you're thinking about a question like this, think about those three things. How do you work on timelines? How do you work cross-functionally with colleagues? And how are you a leader? How do you make sure your project gets done on time? How do you encourage people to meet their deadline that they helped you set? So the first tip is to tell it as a story with a clear result. Again, you don't want to just say, well, when I was doing that, I actually worked uh, with a lot of projects. Uh, you know, it was, it was a pretty tough job and we always had to get a lot of things done for our clients. And yeah, projects every day, every day I had projects. Right? It's very general and pretty much anybody can say that. You want to tell me how to do story and say, well, you know what? In my last job in hospitality, I had a lot of projects. This one in particular required us to, I don't know, renovate a dozen rooms within three months. And this is going to require 15 contractors from three departments. And I was working on this team and I did yada, yada. And the result was we renovated all the rooms on time and they were all settled in and, you know, made the company a million dollars that year. Right. Make sure you tell me it as a story with a clear result. Right. Uh, uh, last year was the anniversary or 2019 was the anniversary of landing on the moon. 
supposedly. No, just kidding. I think we landed. <laughs> the 50th anniversary of landing on the moon. And I was listening to all these podcasts about how the planning actually happened and everything that went down to actually get uh, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin onto the moon. Just saying, this is how I planned and these are all the details and whatever is not interesting unless you know the result is we put a man on the moon. So just saying I planned a project is not that interesting to me unless I know that at the end of your planning, we accomplished X. So give me a very clear result. If it can be code-based, that's even better, right? Maybe it's something you worked on at your boot camp or, or elsewhere. But regardless, you can talk about the soft skills of project planning because that is so core to being an engineer. Next tip, be clear about your strategy, right? When you're considering this answer, have a very specific approach that you took and good reasons to have done it. Um, I hope you recognize this TV show, one of the best. This is Game of Thrones. We're planning a big battle and everyone's got a lot of opinions about how to approach this coming battle. And what I want to know when I'm asking you this question is, what was your approach? What did you do? Why did you take certain strategic decisions? Because all of these different people had different ideas and might have had different approaches. What did you do in planning this project? Did you put it all into Excel? Did you use Asana? Did you first speak with everybody on every team and get their opinion? Did you uh, first go up the team? Did you first go to your client? Did you first get an understanding of timeline? What did you do first? And what was your approach to get it done? Did you have people suggest their own timelines and then hold them to it? Did you have weekly check-ins, daily check-ins, right? Give me your approach because I want to know if I bring you onto my team as a software engineer, I say, Hey, Amy, our client expects this new feature within three months, go figure it out. I want to know how Amy is going to go figure it out right? Is she going to talk to a lot of people? Is she going to work on her own? Is she going to have check-ins? Is she, what's she going to do if something goes under, right? Tell me about your approach. Now, the last thing I want you to consider here is that project planning, which is such a crucial part to being an engineer, is really about leadership. Uh, I, I, tell me if someone recognizes what, who Russell Crowe is in this movie, uh, because it is one of my all-time favorites. Uh, almost broke up with my wife about it because she didn't like war movies and this was one of my favorites, but we're okay now and that's a story for another time. Point is, tell me if you recognize it because leadership is a really important component to project planning. There you go, Sabiha, this is Gladiator. This is General Maximus. He says, what we do in life echoes in eternity. The great General Maximus quote and my yearbook quote. Uh, we, we, we accomplish different things in our lives though. Point is, this is about leadership, right? How do you draw people together? How do you, you know, engineer Amy, encourage engineer Cassandra, who you pulled off the project that she had to make her do your project? How do you encourage her to do her job on the timeline that you set? How do you encourage salesperson Matt to go to their client and say, hey, client, our engineers are actually not going to be able to do this in three months. It's going to take four months, right? How do you encourage everyone to come together and accomplish these things? So when you're sharing the story of how you've done this previously, think about the leadership skills that you had to bring to the table to actually make it happen. Because I'm hiring you again, like we talked about, especially yesterday when Christian, the recruiter joined us, like we talked about there, I am hiring you, sure, because you learned to code, but more than anything, it's because of your potential, culture fit, leadership abilities, and soft skills. Leadership is one of those soft skills that you are going to have to speak to over and over again, and that you have a big advantage over any 21-year-old with a CS degree. Because a 21-year-old with a CS degree, maybe they're a better engineer than you, just line for line, but they're not a better leader than you. Because you have two or 10 or 30 years leading people and teams in other places. So you can step in and really be a mentor or really like punch above your weight class as a leader when you are project planning or you're working on a team. So remember these few things when you're thinking about how to answer this question. Tell it with the story and make sure the result is super clear. Give me a sense of what your strategy was and why you approached it that way. 
And then tell me about your leadership ability. And remember throughout this all, the tips that we talked about of really add some drama, give me that pride, talk about what I accomplished, not just what our team accomplished. I wanna know what you did, what Amy or Matt or Scott or, or Cassandra accomplished, not just what the team did together. And then explain the relevance, right? If it's not super clear, and if you're pulling out from, you know, all, what you've done before this is you were a waiter uh, for a few years, well, that's fine, right? Tell me about how you had to open up the restaurant uh, for a grand opening and how you had to pull people together and how you think it's going to make you a really great engineer because you learned how to work under pressure or how to keep clients happy, or you can work with your salespeople and encourage them to support their clients, whatever. Make those connections clear. So here's what happens next. Uh, if you haven't done this yet, log into riveterworks.com. It's free. It always will be. Um, create an account. Find the question. I'll show you how to do that in a moment and practice your answer and try to give feedback to at least one other video. This is really important. It helps everybody improve and it helps you learn and improve as well. So if you haven't done this yet, quick overview. This is what the homepage looks like for everyone. Make sure you're in the questions tab. Click on buy industry. Click on boot camps. And it's the fourth question down over here. Tell me about a situation you were responsible for, for project planning and you'll be able to practice your answer. Once other answers come up, you'll be able to see, see others' answers kind of like you see it here. Um, when you go through that, uh, you'll see the little white button to record, small white button. We're working on making it bigger. Uh, click add target roles. This is really important. You'll be able to say you're a software engineer or a hardware engineer or whatever with X number of years experience. This helps me and I've given feedback to absolutely every video so far. This helps me give you better feedback so I know if you're new to this, if you're not new to this, whatever. Then for the purposes of today, click to make it public, share it with each other. Later, you can make it private or delete it once you get that feedback and once you've improved.